Hi everyone, welcome back to Sold Out Chat, the gathering for marketing, tech experts, and leaders who want to help their organization get to sold out status. I'm Kay, the marketing coordinator here at Above Promotions. For those joining us for the first time, prepare for a dynamic discussion on the latest tools, innovations, policies, and strategies aimed at helping your brand sell out products or reach capacity with book services. Our last episode discussed from click to close website insight your business needs with our front end web developer, Mauser Alonzo and CEO Ebony Voss. If you missed it, please visit our YouTube channel to replay the dynamic conversation. Today, we will be discussing building cyber resilience. Ebony Voss will be joining us. She is the founder and CEO of Apop Promotions and one of the few marketers in the world with an engineering degree and published research focused on human behaviors and statistical data. Hi, Ebony. Hey, Kay. Thanks so much for getting us started once again. <laughs> Thank you. And she will be joined by Dr. Marlon Atherton. CEO of ATIM Solution Services, a company dedicated to providing comprehensive cybersecurity solutions. He's a Harvard Executive Business Fellow, author, speaker, and passionate leader renowned for his adept leadership in navigating intricate projects to fruition, ensuring clients attain strategic milestones and elevating operational efficiency. Dr. Atherton has over two decades of experience spanning diverse domains such as intelligence, defense, counterintelligence, and cybersecurity. Hello, Dr. Atherton. Hey, Kay, how you doing? Thanks for having me. Thanks for joining us on here. We're happy to have you. Thank I, you. I know when I was like, you know, we need to get a speaker for this month. And I was like, oh, let's see if we can squeeze into his busy schedule. Kay's like, yeah, we, we said we were going to come back to him and have a conversation with him. So I'm like, we're excited to have you on here chatting with us today. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So before we dive in, I want to remind the audience to stay until the end for valuable upcoming opportunities. So be sure to listen all the way through for the details. So let's unlock the secrets through my first question. Um, Dr. Atherton. With so many potential threats, what are the most critical areas for businesses to focus on when building cyber resilience? That is a, a great question, Kay. Um, I, I would say from a critical, you know, critical aspect, right? Uh, and I just actually had this conversation uh, down here at the Tech Hub event. Um, more and more now so, business owners, leaders, you know, C-suites, we have to really think about it as a business risk, right? Uh, as you kind of planning out your your day-to-day -day operations. Some of the, the critical areas for building cyber resilience, and I'm just gonna share a few, right? Risk assessment and management, right? You wanna continuously identify and assess any vulnerabilities within your systems. Um, even for those that you know have employees, um, employee training and awareness, right? Oftentimes we see somebody not really knowing the click of the button, right? So you want to regularly educate your employees about cybersecurity best practices, right? Phishing scams, we get them all the time. Um, incident response plan for, uh, develop. You want to develop and you want to regularly update. Uh, and have a robust incident response plan. Everybody needs to know, hey, if something does happen, what are my next steps? Data recovery, right? The data backup and recovery. I, I would say, you know, data is king for any business. It's a, the life support uh, of their business. Implement reliable data backup solutions uh, to ensure regular testing and recovery of those procedures. And then last uh, but not least, but access control right use some type of multi-factor authentication uh to ensure proper access management i think that's very crucial for any business uh leader um in your in any organization rather small or all the way up to enterprise now it's so much so especially for smaller businesses 
you're kind of i would say a jack of all trades but you're really involved you know depending on how big your company is uh with all the aspects and and you know i, I can't you know stress enough think about cybersecurity as a forethought not an afterthought uh it will save you a lot of money and headaches in the long run you know i, I we talk about you know what you mentioned like data backup um and being able to restore i even you know people take a look at and they think about some of the larger systems but it really should apply to like everything i mean i know we have so many different cloud applications that we're all using um, from our websites to like our crms to our accounting etc um, and some of those all don't always put all the data in one place so you know like you mentioned backing up those different data sources are important and yeah i try to tell people would you rather just go back and only lose a day or two of information you know depending on how your backups are set up or would you <laughs> want to lose it all like i just couldn't imagine having to rebuild everything from scratch as a business owner exactly uh you know in a I say a really great example. I mean, they are much larger, right, in the space. Say your Googles of the world, Microsoft of the world, even some of your large, you know, uh, chains as far as in, uh, chain stores, right? Yeah. Their, their information to them is very, very crucial, right? How they're marketing, and you, you being a marketing expert, you know how critical those data points are. So you lose that. That has that will set you back. Probably, I won't say all the way back to the Stone Age, but it will yeah. definitely hamper your, your business uh, operations. Yeah. I, and I couldn't imagine um, having to just start everything over from scratch. You know, I just couldn't right. do that as a small business. <laughs> right, right. Uh, especially, uh, thank you for pointing that out because a lot of businesses really uh, don't do a lot of backups especially those who are just starting up so thank you very much for mentioning that um many cyber attacks exploit human error uh how can we best educate and empower our employees to be a strong line of defense uh that's an excellent question uh, Kay. um education right education and empowering them right uh, I think that's that's a great one of the things we've seen. Uh, it's a, a big black um, is the education piece, right? So having regular training sessions, um, that's definitely important, right? Conducting regular cybersecurity training sessions, uh, involving simulated phishing attacks, right? Perform regular phishing simulations to raise that awareness. Um, having clear policies and procedures, right? Establish, communicate clear policies. To your workforce right from the head all the way down now i get it it just may be you know a two-person shop but guess what you still have to have some type of communication between yourself and the other uh, business partner and encourage reporting right foster a culture where employees feel comfortable in reporting suspicious activities right um have that i would say yeah you can you can liken it as uh, having an open door policy like hey you know you see something, you know, say something, report it or whatnot. Um, and it starts really with the head, right? So if the head is, is really kind of pushing this and has an interest and really behind this, everybody else will follow. Um, that's one of the things we do, right, uh, here at 18 Solutions. That, that was one of the areas we've seen a lot. Uh, folks was asking, hey, you know, we, we're not postured. Uh, to, to do the, tr the training, the awareness training, can you help us with our workforce? So that workforce development piece is, is crucial. Um, and getting them thing, right? So we, we have a boutique style, you know, cybersecurity as a service where for small business, they may not be able to, like, you know, Ebony said, some of them may not even afford to, to do the cloud thing, right? Or, or do 24 seven uh, monitoring of their systems and data, making sure that they are protected. So we're able to help scale that, right? And help, you know, make it a little bit more affordable for those smaller businesses. Like, hey, some of these things are important. Hey, you may not have an, you know, a dedicated cybersecurity team to conduct those trainings or have those policies. Some people just don't know where to start. 
Um, and, and, you know, I'm, I'm really happy to be in a space and to help provide that and, and you know, to, to bring that awareness. Like, and it starts with the education piece. That's, you know, really, really um, just the starting point, right? Educating them, having a clear policies in place and encouraging that reporting that, you know, encourage them. Hey, you not be Austin because, you know, you, you reported, you know, K, she was, you know, clicking away at some things or whatever she wasn't supposed to be doing or whatnot and downloading software. And now we have the entire network all, you know, messed up because we have unauthorized software uh, on our networks. So, yeah. Yeah. And I, was, um, I remember a couple of years ago, um, I was sitting with the new CISA director. I was in a workshop and she was speaking and our, um, she was indicating that a lot oftentimes that reporting process has been historically very punitive. And so it was like, especially when we think about mobile devices. So people would travel, they may lose their laptop. Um, they may, um, who knows, the air, airline may lose something that they may have packed that is a part of uh, the company's wares. And so the employees were very slow to report it. And so because they were thinking, I've lost this $4,000 device or I've lost this mobile device and I'm going to get in trouble. I'm going to take, you know, several hours to go look for it, backtrack, et cetera. And so in that time frame, what could happen, right? So while you're out here spending hours making a decision if I'm going to report it or not immediately, that is you're actually increasing the amount of time in which someone can go in and do something um, malicious with your device. And so making it easy for people to just throw up their hands and say, hey, um, I misplaced my device. I haven't seen it for the last 15, 20 minutes. I just want to let you know. And then that allows that employee to feel comfortable to share with the IT team so the IT team can do what they need to do to um, eliminate access points through that device. And then the employee can continue their search, but it's better to be like this, like you said, an open door policy and make it very easy for people to report. The other thing, oh, did you have something you want to add to that? No, no, no. I, I totally okay. agree with that. I totally agree with what you said. Making it easy, right? And and not it's just like the whistleblower. We probably heard this act, right? The whistleblower act, right? That mm -hmm. hey, you see something, we encourage you to report it. And you know, yeah, employees they they do fear, well shoot, man, if I, you know, I put myself out there, you know, what are the repercussions? Am I gonna lose my job? You know, yeah. You know, so I think he has fostered an environment where, hey, it's it's okay. Um, there may be some consequences, yes. But however, it's better that you you know kind of speak up now rather than later, right? Because it it probably the consequences could probably be probably ten x, right? Yeah, yeah. And then the other thing that we've been trying to focus on is how you word. Um, and phrase like access controls. So for instance, people feel a certain kind of way if they don't have full access to software. And so it is much easier to explain to your team members that should something go wrong, we wanna know exactly which employees we can go to to try to resolve the issue versus let's give everybody free reign. And now we've got to go one by one by one by one to go see who could have possibly have caused an issue. So I think it's all in framing things. Um, you know, we've been trying to spend a lot of time and focusing on that uh, psychology, that human factor part of working with people and technology and integration. And, and you know, you're, you're very much so into digital transformation so it, it's it's a work it's a it's a progress and we have to continue to do that work in education no i, I 100 um you know we, we practice this thing called uh role-based access right and mm -hmm. i think more and more and i you probably heard because i think that's actually met first time uh, 
doing some training for small businesses uh say hey you know not because say on your home network right you have your your sons or your you know your, your children using the same network now some may be difficult but if you're running your home business right even though you're running your home business you still want to have your access restricted right you can't mm -hmm. have johnny jumping on your your business laptop <laughs> right doing you know whatever he wants to right um and same thing at, at, at your your office site right everybody doesn't need to have access to where this you know data files or whatnot or particular software or even you know folks to uh upgrade software right it's time for me to do an update everybody doesn't need to have access to do the update it could just be that one person where it is kk you're responsible for all our past past tuesday past wednesday which whichever day you you pick right so like you said if something happens i know okay k you're you're my you're responsible for this particular thing you're the only one that had access what happened what took place so you can narrow down you know where the vulnerability mm -hmm. lies. um and i i think you 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 are 100 percent is like hey we have to take those extra steps regardless if you know some people may well how come k has all these accesses and i only have access to this yeah this, this is the reason why we do that right because we have to shrink our threat uh environment right that that, yeah. that field needs to be shrunk. so if it's certain things we have to put in place like hey you know the role base that's that's important um so no you you 100 on 100 percent correct on, on that piece mm -hmm. thank you for that uh ebony and dr atherton uh just one more thing that i wanted to add to that uh like how you can best educate and empower your employees is that one tradition that we've been doing here at the Bob Promotions that Ebony does to everyone she onboards, may it be employees, uh, contractor, or even interns, is that upon onboarding we already have this uh cyber security training so that's one thing that you should also add to your um company so yeah anyway for our next question oh that's, that's sorry good. no no that's that's actually a good case you know and it starts with um again right depending on your size usually some of the bigger companies the hr department right all of that on the onboarding and the indoctrination that's part of it so now we have to take that big approach, like you said, even with smaller companies, like, hey, it's a reason why these bigger companies are doing it because it's important. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, follow suit, right? The same thing we have to do on a smaller scale. Like, hey, guys, these are our policies. You know, you're onboarding. We need you to kind of go through this training as well so you understand our, you know, our rules of engagement. So now you are that, yeah, spot on. You know, you just have to get more smaller businesses thinking that way exactly so um a cyber attack is almost inevitable uh can you walk us through key steps to take in the immediate aftermath of a security breach yeah so you know immediate steps after the security be, uh, breach um again it kind of ties into to having that, that plan right uh one you want to identify and contain the breach right quickly identify the source of the breach contain it and prevent it from further damage. So if it's, you know, network or whatnot, uh, computers on a network and you figure out that, hey, this particular computer has been compromised, you want to isolate that as quickly as possible. Then, you know, you want to assess the damage, right? Evaluate the extent of the breach uh, and determine what data or systems were affected. Then notify your stakeholders, right? Inform all relevant stakeholders, including your customers, employees, uh, and any regulatory body. So if, if, for instance, if you uh, you follow say the HIPAA or the PCI compliance, you're dealing with money and you know charge cards and all this good stuff, uh, you wanna make sure you kind of notifying those bodies as, as well to keep yourself out of you know, hot water. Uh, and then conduct a root cause analysis, right? Determine how the breach occurred in the first place, right? And address those vulnerabilities. You may have have had an outdated system, outdated operating system. Uh, Wi-Fi was wide open, uh, not secured. 
uh, I dated, you know, from, from the physical side, dated servers. Um, so it wasn't taking the patches of the updates or whatnot, uh, the support. So those, those things are important. And then you want to review and update security measures, right? Strengthen your security measures to prevent future breaches. Uh, that's, that's important. So you want to, you know, although we as a security professional, we don't want this to happen. Uh, unfortunately, like you stated in your question, it does happen. Um, so we want to make sure that we learn from it and put those things in place to tighten up on, on our vulnerabilities and kind of get it down to, to near zero if we can. Um, so I thought I saw somebody with their hand raised um, in there. I don't know if that's allowed or not, but. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll try to add them um, after we finish our last question. Okay. So hopefully that answers you, Kay. So, you know, you mentioned cost analysis. Let's keep talking about costs. Mm -hmm. What are some of the cost effective ways that you can build this foundation? So, of so I, I had you on that piece, but it's root cause analysis. You know, I got an accent, Ebony. Oh, yeah. I that. <laughs> yeah. But we can talk the cost piece, though, because that's important, too. That is. <laughs> Let's do that. Let's do that. So the cost piece. So again, right. And I think this is where the whole mindset change, right? Where you have to think about cybersecurity as a business risk right and it's not just any other thing that you just add on at the end that you sprinkle it over here because when you start doing that cost piece that's that you know you you brought up right okay what what is how if this should happen right when you're doing a risk assessment right and you're providing that report to the C ceos right of the world like yourself uh and i come to ebony and i say look you have this, this is your network, this is your picture, this is how you posture, but we found these vulnerabilities. And based on your business goals and where you're trying to go, if this particular network or this computer system that's servicing all your contracts uh, or you're, you're running your marketing campaigns or whatnot should go down, what does that do or how does it affect your operations and your dollar, right? Your, your top dollar, bottom dollar, what have you. Okay, this could severely knock me out, right? Where I'm generating, say, ten ten thousand dollars a day. If my system go down, how long uh, can I even operate for without really having it, you know, feeling it, right? So if it's ten, say, just example, ten thousand uh, dollars a day, you're now losing ten thousand dollars a day from your revenue, right? Because that system has gone down. Now think about a small business. Ten thousand dollars is a lot for a small business, right? You can probably cripple and shut the doors because you've just lost ten thousand dollars a day from coming in. Now, for you to put in the implementations or the pieces that's needed to pre prevent that or to bring it down to as as you know the risk down to close to zero as possible, whether you're implementing or renting out you know, a sock as a service or whatnot, put, probably put some antivirus in there, some tools that's monitoring your stuff 24 seven, it costs you probably say $5,000 for the month, right? So when you look at it, would I rather pay $5,000 a month over the 12 months, right? Versus I lose this data that you talked about or operations where I'm earning $10,000 a day when you do the cost analysis, wait a minute, it, it behooves me to pay the $5,000 a month so my operations is not um, interrupted, which is bringing me $10,000 a day. You see what I'm saying? So some people, yes, technology is expensive, right? It is expensive. It's not cheap. But you have to look at all of those things across the board, right? With this thing we we tend to get out in the Intel community, Intel intelligence gains a loss. You have to look at it. What's the cost benefit to me putting this, getting these new systems, getting these things in place now versus a long one? An example, um, during the, the COVID era, right? Uh, there's a company out there, there's a doctor's office. I think it was like 10 employees. They were working on some research during that time and they were hit with a ransomware attack right now he had 
uh, at the time some insurance, right? But they wanted, I think it was probably 1.8 or $1.9 million, something like that. Not sure how they came up with the number, but it was, you know, over a million dollars. Now, just think if he didn't have certain things in place, whether it's the insurance piece or some of the other things, um, you know, just monitoring the stuff, where where would that million dollars, he'd be out of a million dollars, right? Now, was it worth him getting that insurance and getting those other things in place? In the long run, he said, yes, it was totally worth it, right? So I think everybody needs to take it to that approach. So hopefully, that's kind of along the line you, you the thread you were, you were pulling. Yeah, you know, um, one of the things I tell people oftentimes, like their website is like another employee for them that works 24 seven. And some of these tools are the same thing, right? You can't afford to have, you might not be able to afford to have a CISO at your small business but you could pull together some tools that would come in cheaper for you. You can bring in experts, you know, teams like your company to come set you up and you utilize these tools to help keep you going. I think that sometimes um, it's hard when you're a small business trying to measure that risk um, and, and how far you're willing to risk your business and what you're willing to invest in to really try to mitigate that risk. Um, I do, we do have like one other question we wanna to get to, and then we'll see if we have time to, to pull up that audience question. But um, let's talk about the future. Um, what are the trends we're seeing? Because I know I go to a lot of cybersecurity summits and events and everything is like AI. So what are you seeing? Um, in terms of trends in the direction of cybersecurity. Okay, so huh, AI. <laughs> That's like the hotness right now, gen AI and all the good stuff. Um, it's definitely shaping the way we do business, right? Um, AI, machine learning, um, I mean, we use it, right? If we all most of I would say probably all of my tools set has ai in it right because the speed right speed is key it's key right when you're digesting say for instance this our uh, scene digesting all those packets all the information coming in our human brain cannot function <laughs> that quickly right it, it just can't so pulling all that information, uh, analyzing it, spitting it out, right, in the SOC environment, that's key for us to making sure that, hey, if something is happening, we can respond quickly without your information or your business being compromised too long, right? That's that's a big, it's, it's, that's not going away. AI is not going away. Um, the other thing is the zero trust architecture, right? Implementing zero trust principles, uh, to secure all access points. That's important. Uh, that's coming about uh, within the space. You see in the governments, they're really pushing that. Um, you're starting to see even increased regulations, stricter regulations on compliance requirements for data protection. Um, you you have even a NIST, some of the folks down here that I, I, I you know, we speak to and we go to a lot of the seminars together. Um, they have a, a group that actually submitted some some changes and uh, some inputs for the NIST uh, framework for AI, <clears throat> and um, that was I think that was key and very crucial. There are folks I think up north as well in your parts, uh, Ebony, and up there in the Tampa area also worked on some of those things because it's it's important, right? They're even putting out the government. They just put out here in the U.S. some legislative concerning that. Right, because you start seeing, uh, if you've heard the term deep fakes, and it's all over the news, right? People <laughs> cloning people's voices and stuff. Just last night, uh, I was up late, uh, just happened to watch the Jimmy Fallon show, and he was doing a, a bit, I can't remember the name of the actor, with Shaq, right? And Shaq's voice was used to mimic the other guy. Uh, so you, you're seeing it, right? So things are in place now. 
and they're starting to become a little tighter. And hey, how do we do it? Because guess what? There's light and there's darkness. There's good, there's evil, right? So the more these things are evolving as professionals, we also have to evolve because guess what? The bad guys are not sleeping. They're not taking a day off. They're continuing to evolve as well. So we have to stay in step and uh, and try to be ahead of them so we can kind of you know continue to protect uh, the information in our clients. The other big thing is quantum computing threats. Uh, preparing for a potential impact of quantum computing. That's been been a, a discussion to uh, IBM has, I, I want to say, I think at least three or four of the big brain computers, right? Uh, I, we are in a, one of the consortiums for that as well. Uh, that's another thing that's that's popping. So that's that's on the on the horizon as well. Now, the thing is, <clears throat> back in the day, all this AI stuff, a lot of stuff was expensive, right? We couldn't get to a cloud, for instance, it was expensive when it first came out, right? But now as we, conti as, as we continue to um, streamline a lot of the things, it's becoming a little bit more affordable for us to get into, right? And I'm saying us, I'm talking about small businesses. So there are tools, there are free tools, yes. There are tools you can use, um, but there's this, this I don't, I don't call, it, call it a program. It's only but so far free tools could get you, right? Uh, then you have to make that investment. Uh, but still, please do that research and, and see, you know, and have discussions, right? People like myself, uh, Ebony and, and her folks, where, you know, you want us to take a look at your, your, your structure and see, hey, this may actually fit this particular tool set. This may actually fit for you versus going out and getting this, you know, have those discussions, right? Don't be afraid to, to reach out. Um, you don't know what you don't know, right? And, and knowledge is definitely uh, key uh, and educating yourself is definitely key. Um, and don't be fearful of the unknown. Yeah, definitely um, reach out to people. I know we have a data privacy framework for marketing tech tools that um, we have a session that we you know, go and teach and share. And I think we'll be sharing that um, in August. Um, at the uh, what is it the PR and Com Summit that's coming up in the Tampa Bay area. So, um, Serene, if you do still have your question, we'll take it super quickly because I know we're going over time, um, and I don't want to um, take advantage of Dr. Atherton's time. But if you do still have your question, go ahead and raise your hand. We'll pull you up. You can quickly ask it. Um, Let's see. There you are. Hi. Um, thank you so much. I'll be really quick. It's just really a resource because I know you're short for time. I'm a private mental practice owner. Um, just wanting to know, are there any conferences or psychoeducational um, webinars that will be coming up for us? I'm sure you guys may have touched on the change healthcare cybersecurity. My practice was heavily impacted and still now we're recovering. Um, you know, so I have many questions about what are the implications for these companies to release themselves from liability and pos possibly put the liability on us? Um, and if cyber um, liability insurance is really worth having and does it protect us in any way? Thanks. Okay, great, great question, Ms. Uh, Prince. Um, the medical field is, is definitely um, is evolving and, and they're definitely starting to see an uptick. Um, Cybersecurity insurance. I I personally I am on on I won't say on fence, but I'm both sides because for some it works, for some it doesn't make any sense, right? For for some, um, depending on where you are. I would say this for you as well. I do have a, a I call it a manual because a book to me and it's really a, a big book, uh, probably 150 pages plus. But I have I actually. Uh, out of the class that I, I lecture at for the, um, the minority business development group on the Department of Commerce, they pushed me and said, hey, you probably need to put this thing in a book. So I actually have a book on Amazon. You can, you can search me up on the name and it gives you some foundation things that you can put in place uh, right now for your business, right? As far as a resource. 
Uh, it's on Amazon. You search my name up, you will find it. Um, I say that's a good start. The other thing is have have a discussion. We can set up a a one-on-one um, -on -one call. Because uh, what I like to do, and, and Ebony, she, she pointed out earlier, digital transformation is a big thing for me. And how we how we approach it, right? We look at your technology, your processes, and then your people. So we have those discussions, right? So almost like a free consultation, and kind of just kind of hear some of your pain points and some of your, you know, where where you're trying to go. And then we come up with a solution uh, or solutions that you can implement, right? Whether you want to work with us or, or whatnot. I think um, there are a number of conferences all throughout, depending on where you are in Florida. I'm actually getting ready. Um, my my SOC group that I use, uh, ConnectWise, they're actually flying me out to Orlando next week uh, for their big IT conferences uh, there in Orlando. Um, so <clears throat> there are a lot of conferences you can look for, whether it's get to the medical field or whatnot. But what I, I would caution though, most of the conferences, yes, they're educational, but most, some of the conferences, if not most, they're get to pushing a lot of products. Sales, 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 sales. sales. So it may not really be beneficial to uh, to you at this point, right? So unless you have like a like a person like for we, like a team, we provide uh, virtual CISO support, right? So if I'm your CISO. Uh, right. And like, you know, you're talking like, Marla, I need to get X, Y, and Z in place. Right. Then based on our industry partners, like we, we're partnered with IBM, Cisco, uh, Red Hat, ConnectWise, and a whole slew of other folks. We come up with the, the technology pieces like, OK, this is what will work for you. We do the assessments. These are some of your vulnerabilities, where you're exposed. This is some of the things you need to address. Um, and you go from there. Right. And we help with a with a plan. Uh, uh, a layered approach to how you get after it. Uh, so I would say if you want to have a one-on-one -on -one consult, uh, consultant uh, block of time, uh, please feel free to reach out. We, I would love to talk to you and kind of meet you where, where, where you're at, right? Um, I think that that may be a good first step, a great first step. And check out that book, right? It's, uh, it's a very simple, quick read, 30 pages, but it's it's like an instructional book, right? Where you could, okay, you can go step by step in some of the things that it has to offer. And you can implement it. Hopefully that helps you. Great response. At least I thought so. Oh, I see the thumbs up too. <laughs> so you want a team on your team. <laughs> yeah, I like that. That's right. That's why see that I like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. So we've gone over a bit of our time and we've learned a lot from this session today. If only we had more time. So thank you, Ebony and Dr. Atherton for sharing great insights with us today. So wrap up this discussion, we learned empowering your users, preparing for the inevitable, cybersecurity on a budget and staying ahead of the curve. So Check out our website for a free copy of our latest cyber crisis management white paper. Follow us on LinkedIn for more valuable insights. So we also want those who tuned in. If you joined us late, do not worry. This recording will be available on our website abovepromotions.com. And if you are not subscribed to our newsletter, you missed a couple of these upcoming events on June 28th. Ebony Vaz will be speaking at the Summer Business Expo at Hotel Alba Tampa. Secure your ticket on summerbusinessexpo.com. Okay. All right. I have a treat for all your listeners, right? For, for those that reach out to us uh, and mention above promotion, they will receive uh, a free, free consultant time, free 30-minute consultant time and assessment. Wow, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much for that, Dr. Atherton. So be sure to mention about promotions when you want to book a free consultation, 30-minute consultation with A Team Solution. Okay, so until then, keep innovating and achieving new heights. Thank you.